The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Welcome to The Pulse. I'm your host, Andy Blake. If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome to my new show where throughout the year, we will profile interesting guests, SMEs, tourism and attractions, travel, food, including local culture. So fasten your seat belts and prepare to take flight with me right here on my TV. On the show this week, we check out one of the popular beaches in the Central Division that you did not know exist. Our profile on Suva's popular curry restaurant, Zam Zam. And in our Culture Exposed, we profile the tomb of one of Fiji's notorious cannibals. But first, my Talanoa with a very popular face who is definitely no stranger to Fiji's limelight. In 1988, she was crowned Miss Hibiscus, Fiji's premier pageant during its heyday that catapulted her career and fame. Today, she is an honorable member of parliament. From the province of Kandavu, we meet Lenora Gerger Tambua. Bulavinaka, my name is Lenora Salusalu Ngerengere Tambua and I'm a member of parliament in Fiji on the opposition for now. Ooh, start my day. Even before I open my eyes, I pray. Yeah, so uh, pray, water, coffee, and either train or no train. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so I was born in Lotoka. Um, born in Lotoka, I'm the oldest of the two of us. I have a younger brother. And then we moved to Suva. I, uh, um, I'm from Kandavu. Dad's from Kandavu. My mother's from Naitasiri. Uh, we moved from Lautoka to Suva. Uh, I grew up in Suva, did uh, kindergarten and the beginning of primary school class one, part of class one in, in Suva before we moved to Nandi. And um, so I spent most of my life in Nandi. I went to Namaka Public School and then I spent one term at uh, Sawani. Um, and then by term two of class seven, I was back in my primary school. So thank goodness I didn't get rid of my primary school uniform. After I did FJC, I uh, went to Canberra to go and finish high school in Canberra. Um, yeah, that's, uh, and then came back to Fiji after year 12 and um, got my first job um, training. I, was, I trained as a television producer, which was uh, my first job. And, um, and then the first uh, coup happened in 1987, which meant I had to you know, go find another job. And, uh, and then um, worked in the bank for a couple of years before I uh, then decided to perhaps go back to uni and pick up where I left off uh, after leaving year 12. So um, yeah, that's pretty much um, what I've done. I didn't finish uni um, in Canberra, came back in 92, um, worked a little bit more with Fiji TV and then joined uh, radio and uh, the rest as they say is history. <laughs> Ooh, you know, I have so much faith in this country. Um, I know that Fiji can be a much better place to be born in. I know Fiji can be a much better place to, 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 to study in, to live in, to make a, a prosperous living in. Um, but a lot has to change before we can see that reality and I want to be part of that change. I think it might have been a couple of years after Hibiscus in 1988. I was doing perhaps one of my very first MC gigs. I remember it was at the then Ming Palace and um, afterwards William Parkinson from uh, Communications Fiji Limited came up to me, introduced himself and said, you know, we're looking for some part-time announcers. Would you be interested? So I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I think I was still working at the bank at that time. 
at uh, and and so I'd work at the bank on the weekdays and I'd do part-time radio on, on on the weekends and then after that I left radio you know went back to Australia to when uh, do uni when I came back from uni after I left with a little the short stint at Fiji TV I decided you know radio was going to be a great place for me to be so I went on and um, became the the third wheel in that uh, great breakfast show with Raymond and uh, Aquila uh, and was the best we, we did so much prep you wouldn't believe the amount of prep we would do we would start at 6 finish at 10 and it was stayed into the studio writing scripts recording uh, little skits recording funny stuff I had a character I was a guru so I would put on my Indian accent and tell the horoscopes but you know in a funny uh, style um, I shouldn't say who Bumbu Akosita was, there was a Bumbu Akosita on the show. So one of the guys was Bumbu Akosita and Raymond was just the, the crazy guy. So we had a great time. Um, yeah, so we, we did that for a, for a little while. I had my baby, Annalisa, during, you know, when I, uh, during the breakfast show days. That was absolutely zany. Um, then as I matured, I became the program director. But when I joined radio as a part-timer, my program director was um, uh, Mere Lomaloma, the late Mere Lomaloma. So I've had program directors like Mere Lomaloma, Helen Chandra, who is now in the US, Ravi Sharma, before I became uh, myself the program director. So it's been a, a great journey. Um, met lots of friends who are still friends. And then after I left uh, uh, Communications Fiji Limited in 2000, I joined a public relations company, George Rubine, and then I went and joined FBC. So I was an announcer on uh, Radio Fiji Gold. Yes. <laughs> you didn't know that, eh? Ooh, well, memorable is all relative. That's memorable to me, maybe not to anybody else. Um, let's see, getting into parliament. Getting into parliament is memorable for me because I was, you know, an absolute newcomer, never been involved actively in any kind of politics before. And you know, first time um, running for public office in 19 in 2018. Uh, another memorable thing. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, jumping out of a perfectly good aeroplane at around 14,000 feet, attached to a parachute and attached to somebody else. Of course, don't think I have enough guts to jump out by myself. I have a fear of heights, so jumping out of that plane was something. Uh, also, getting my uh, open water scuba certification. Um, just a couple of months before finding out my daughter was uh, in my belly, so then I couldn't dive for a little while. Um, but uh, yeah, three <gasps> unhealthy and ungodly relationships. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, they can really stuff you up. <laughs> leadership, leadership, I think is is something that really is resonating with me right now. You know, not only um, national leadership, but um, leadership of our communities, leadership of our churches. Um, you know, at a time when there's so much turmoil in Fiji and the world, we look to leadership. And, you know, if, 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 if the leadership is not strong, like they say, everything rises and falls on leadership, and biblically, everything comes down, the anointing comes down, you know? So, you know, if it's good from the top, everything will come and collect on the hems of the robe of Aaron. And when it's collecting there, that's the you and me. You know, what's going to be collecting around us? Is it going to be good anointing or bad anointing? That's why leadership to me right now is, is just really, really key. And it's something that I'm um, just really, really praying about very, very hard. Uh, you know, national leadership, community leadership, church leadership. You know, we have to, this country needs to change. Uh, and we can't always expect leadership because we're still humans at the end of the day. You know, no matter how high you rise, you're still humans and you won't be perfect until you get to heaven. So in the meantime, we've got to be like swans, you know, like feet paddling madly under the surface of the water trying to get to where we're going. Ooh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, well, heaps of stuff. Uh, well, one particular thing is before the court, so I really can't talk about it. Uh, but in the days before social media, I heard got into one taxi one day and my taxi driver said to me that um, somebody got into his taxi and said that I had gone overseas to get lip reduction surgery. But that was the days before social media, so I don't know if that counts. <laughs>
women like my Bumbusai from Netasiri, my mother's mother, she was still carrying her youngest child when she, when my grandfather, Tete Sakusa Nairoti Uluwula, passed away. My grandmother was very young. I think she would have been, she couldn't have been even 35 then, but she had already taken under her wings three of my Tai Tai's children from a previous relationship, from a previous marriage, and she had her own children. But my Tai Tai was a very successful man in the village, apparently, according to mom. He was the first guy in the village that had a business, the first man in the village that owned a watch. He had a punt with an engine. Um, he had a dairy farm. So my grandmother, after my father passed away, mama, after my grandfather passed away, uh, mom said she was in Sawani. Mom was in Sawani. And she remembers my, mother, uh, my grandmother coming to the gates of ACS in black morning clothes with a big belly, carrying my Nana Lele Mary, who has since passed away. When my grandfather passed away, my, my grandmother told her daughters, you stay in school. You get educated, boys get out of school so you can come and help me in the dairy farm and in the farm. So my grandmother basically single-handedly put my mom with help from my Tai Tai Ndao and Bumbu Matila Ndao uh, from Mid Road. Um, they put her through nursing school. My Nana Taina, Nana Landa Taina, she was, um, I think, chief accountant of government. Um, and, you know, so uh, she raised some very good, uh, well-educated daughters. And then also my mom as well, who's now 80 years old, still inspiring me every day with her energy, with the amount of time she spends, um, going through the Matangali finances, not only for my Matangali, but her own Matangali, Neita Siri. She's an inspiration. I mean, you just met her. She's just come back from helping uh, a niece buy her computer for her second year at uh, nursing, at um, teacher's college. So she's still going. She's like a dynamo. And I think she gets that a lot from her mom, her own mom, Ian Bumbusai. So my inspiration right now are my the memory of my grandmother and what my mother has told me about her and also my mom. Nostalgic memories, wow, you know, those two decades were really big decades for me personally. It was the decade that I went to Canberra to start to, to continue with high school after doing FJC. Um, it was the decade, the 80s, the decade I got my first job, moved into my first flat. Um, and then uh, also um, hibiscus, I'm gonna bring it up, I know you're gonna bring it up. And then the 90s decade for me was also very nostalgic. When I look back now, as I had my baby, uh, met my husband, got married, started a family. Yeah, so those are the things that um, stand out the most for me of those two decades. And of course, the best music came from the 80s. <laughs> oh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. My mother used to drill that into my head when my brother and I used to fight as little kids, you know. Um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I am hoping maybe for being authentic. You know, what you get is what you see is what you get. Um, yeah, being authentic, being genuine. Yeah. Saying what I mean and meaning what I say. Mm. I, there might be from certain parties, but uh, I haven't gotten the Nemo yet. <laughs> And also, you know, I, I mean, I shouldn't probably say this as a politician, but you can't just post just to be relevant, you know? And, and I think we as Gang from Fiji, we've got a pretty good BS detector. We can, we can uh, detect the BS if you're just posting to stay relevant. Eh? Um, so I only post when there's something really important that I really, you know, believe in, think about, angry about, happy about, sad about, or just photos from people I meet. <gasps> hidden talents. What do you mean by hidden talents? Uh, I'm still trying to learn how to play the ukulele, self-taught. But I can cross my eyes. I can cross my eyes this way. I can cross my eyes this, this way. One eye this way or the other way. And I can juggle three balls at a time. Um, but with uh, crossing my eyes, uh, please don't ask me to show you. My husband keeps saying, yo, keep on doing that. One day, my father, one day. <laughs> okay, I wonder if you can do that. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Gosh, there's so much. First one on the list, I was just looking up the website the other day, is to finish my MBA. I really need to finish that thing. 
started it such a long time ago. I met one of my uh, group mates from, I started in 2008 when I was still at Vodafone. And then just got busy. I completed the first step, which is, you know, undergraduate certificate in um, human uh, resources um, uh, management. But um, after that, it just got busy, too many excuses. Um, but I reckon, you know, if I have time after the next elections, I can do the rest of the, how many units have I still got left? I think nine units to get the full MBA. Yeah. Oh man, downtime. I wish I could get to Kandavu right now. Um, you know, with, with COVID restrictions now, if it wasn't for COVID restrictions, my favorite downtime is being by the ocean. Being in the ocean, by the ocean. But since uh, right now when we're recording, we can't uh, travel to the islands, um, I like to read. Read and catch some movies. <clears throat> we don't have a radio in the, we don't even have a CD player in the house. We don't have a TV either. <laughs> so the time I listen to the radio is if I am um, in the car or, you know, online, but I listen to a lot of gospel. We pretty much listen to gospel, my husband and I, all the time. So my favorite gospel song right now would be The Great I Am. Yeah, I'll show you a video after this, it's an awesome song. Okay, first off, I don't like cooking. Uh, so I would invite Lisa Volkoro because she just makes me laugh. She's a courageous woman, she's a cancer survivor, she's got so many stories to tell. Um, I've been to her mother's village, Yadata. I've been to her village, Yadata, a couple of times already with her. And when I have Lysa over, I'm not going to bother cooking because I don't like cooking. So I'm going to go to our favorite curry place down here in Samambula. So I'm going to get some nice fish curry from Zam Zam and um, a goat curry, which I'll force Lysa to eat. Yes, while we laugh and laugh and laugh and go boingy. <laughs> And uh, I'm really asking you about fashion. I am so not fashionable. Um, the fact that it's wearable art, I think that's probably because I know nothing about fashion. You know me, I'm not fashionable at all. I go up to the supermarket at Kundansing with a t shirt and a sulwatonga or shorts and t shirt. So I just get dressed up for parliament, that's about it. Um, but what excites me about fashion is the fact that. The, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's in the artist's impression and the artist's um, imagination. Uh, that anything goes, maybe not so much, but um, yeah, that people can wear the beautiful creations of someone's um, creativity. If it feels comfortable, wear it. Yeah. I usually come out, like, you know, getting ready to go to Parliament, I'll come out to my husband and my daughter and go, does this look okay? Is this too much? And they're my mirrors. Yeah, so my personal style is, you know, as long as I'm comfortable, as long as I don't offend anybody, um, I'm okay. A beauty secret. Hmm. As I get older, the beauty secrets get a bit more, the list gets longer. But, um, um, what is it? What is this I'm wearing? Um, pressed powder or whatever what is it? Compact. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah, that's about it. Um, uh, and no other secrets for your beautiful skin. And you, you look the same from when you was Miss Hibiscus to now. No, you lie. You know why? Because when I became Miss Hibiscus, I had not discovered that you could wax. Right. right. So there's this lovely photo of me on the cover of the Air Fiji Airways then or Air Pacific then um, in flight magazine as Miss Hibiscus, not one single thing of makeup. I had uh, dots on my forehead from, I had just had pimples and uh, I needed an upper lip wax. I'm Lenora Ngeregere Tambua on The Pulse with Andy Blake. Former Miss Hibiscus and Member of Parliament, Lenora Ngeringer Tambua, sharing insights into her personal and professional life. You can keep up to date with the work she does by following her social media pages. Great stuff. Time for a short break. Up next, it's my postcard from Nasalai Beach in Tailevu. You're watching The Pulse.
The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Since the 1920s, this narrow stretch of sandy beach and palm-fringed coastline has been one of the undiscovered gems of the Thai Level province. Well, up until now. Nasilai Beach, about a 20-minute drive from Nausori, is a popular destination when it comes to picnic spots for the locals. Nothing says Nasty Light Beach than the picturesque views and swaying palm trees that adds garnish to the secluded picnic spot. In the distance there, the islands of Ngao and Ovalau and up there, a part of this beach that holds lots of history and memories. And just about a 20 minute drive from Nausori town in the Delta, or an hour from Fiji's capital Suva, is the slice of Thai level paradise. Even when the beach is at its full capacity, you will never know. Because with the long stretch of sandy beach behind me, there's lots of room for everyone. And with the beach's seclusion and guaranteed privacy, remember to bring a packed lunch and refreshments. Otherwise, there is sweet green coconuts that is ready for the picking. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Welcome back to The Pulse. I trust you are enjoying the show this evening. Before the break, our Eat, Stay, Love segments profile on Nasilai Beach, Tailevu's hidden gem and picnic spot. 
Now let's check out one of the most popular restaurants in Suva that is famous for their curries. Our profile on Zemzem restaurant in our homegrown segment this week. one restaurant in Suva that has captured my taste buds when it comes to tasty curries. Zemzem Zem Restaurant, a hole in the wall gem down Moala Street in Samambula, is the go-to curry place in the capital city. The restaurant opens from 8 a.m. daily and you can choose from a tasty selection of chicken, lamb, seafood, duck and vegetarian curries, including a selection of other dishes on their menus. When I was so small, I was four years old, my mom passed away. And I always go around with my grandmother. And my grandmother going everywhere to do the cooking. So I, that's how I learned. And then when I started growing slowly, slowly, my food always tastier. And I, you know, like, I never think that I will be come up somewhere this way, this long, and I will gonna run a business. But now today, I see where's the things coming from. My grandmother gave me all this gift. And I just like, thanks for Lord that I'm a gifted from these things, that I will overcome here this way, far all this way. This week in our Culture Explained, we profile the tomb of the world's most prolific cannibal, Ratu Unre Unre. most notorious cannibal and tribal chief's tomb is located about 10 minutes outside of Rakiraki town in the Ra province. The tomb is surrounded with 872 stones that represents each of his unlucky victims. Ratu Unre Unre was widely feared when cannibalism was rife in Fiji. wraps the pulse this week. I trust you enjoyed our show. My Talano with Lenora Ngerenger Tambua, our profile on Tailevu's best kept secret, Nasalai Beach, and Suva's best curry restaurant, Zam Zam. I look forward to your company again next week, right here on my TV. For comments and questions, send us a message via our Facebook page, The Pulse with Andy Blake. Remember to like our page and give this video a big thumbs up. You can also watch this episode again on demand via our MyTV YouTube channel and our Eat Stay Love segments on board Fiji Airways in flight soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe. Nisamo de Manda. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji.